welcome to Trade Happy. Welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. You guys have been um, pretty much demanding more and more episodes from me. Um, you know, I love doing it. So if you guys have any other guests that you want me to get on, just let me know. I can reach out to them and see if I can get them on, but no promises. Um, I did put out a poll a week ago to see what kind of content do you guys want, and 65% of you wanted more uh, podcast episodes. So here you go. Um, I will try and get some more on. Yeah, today's guest is uh, a very, very interesting one. He's built uh, multiple income sources. Uh, he learned about trading when he was 16 or 17 um, from the institutions. Now, um, I'm not sure if he traded for institutions, but he learned from the institutions, which is very, very interesting. And he now has a trading floor of himself, or he now has a trading floor. Um, he you now mentors traders. He also does like kind of a wealth investing, that kind of thing, a bit of real estate. Um, but we talk about how to develop income streams. Um, also, you know, how to actually set up a trading floor if you're looking to get into one. Some tips for traders that are looking to join some prop firms out there maybe you want to join a hedge fund as well um yeah we talked about loads in this in this episode his own strategy that he used where he learned it i hope that you enjoy it if you do hit the like button um comment below what kind of um maybe there was something that he said maybe there was something that i said that you really enjoyed and got value from drop it in the comments below it'll be really good to see what you guys get value from this um episode please welcome tristan so for anyone that doesn't know who you are can you just tell us a bit about yourself uh yeah sure so my name is uh, tristan Neil wilson uh, i'm from uh, montreal canada um you know i've uh, been a trader since almost seven years uh, and a real estate investor as well. Um, basically, I started trading when I was uh, as young as uh, 16, 17. Uh, I've um, always been fascinated by financial markets. Um, mm. So basically started with, you know, stocks. Um, I didn't know much about trading at that time. So I just kind of picked the biggest company that I've, uh, you know, I knew. So Apple, Tesla, uh, I didn't hold Tesla as as of today, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so when I you know turned eighteen, I, I've uh, discovered the forex market, basically the currency market, and uh, it just you know seems to me that it was more interesting to get into the currency market just because of the fact that that you were trading uh, economies instead of uh, only smaller companies. So piqued my interest. Um, for first two years, I was you know, obviously learning on the internet, just like a little bit uh, everybody else is doing. Uh, when we start trading, didn't, didn't get, you know, really much uh, profitable. Um, but then I, you know, asked myself, who are the guys that were doing the, the most money in, 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 the, in the currency market and in the, in the stock market? And obviously, uh, you know, the answer was um, the uh, hedge funds, the, the bank, the financial institutions, so I've decided to go meet, you know, guys in hedge funds, trading floor, banks, uh, just, you know, make some friends in, in that area. Uh, so I went to New York, um, meet some friends there. And I kind of saw, you know, that the word that they were seeing the market was uh, a little bit different than what I've learned, you know, as a retail trader on the internet, looking at technical uh, charts. Um, so one of the things that, you know, I saw it was, um way different is that they all first start to build a fundamental analysis over the um, the economy and then they go to the charts and uh, and uh, you know look for uh, the fundamental direction and match the charts with it and just get into the market so um basically when i came back to montreal was uh, kind of a game changer for me next year i started to build fundamental analysis in the way that you know, uh, banks and hedge funds were doing, um, and it uh, yeah kind of changed my game. Basically, the first year I, I got you know profitable for the first time. Uh, and the next year after that, I've uh, you know I had a company at the time, a payment processing company that I decided to sell, and just went trading full time, investing in real estate a little bit, 
And, uh, you know, fast forward today, we opened a trading floor um, last year uh, with all the people that I've mentored in the last two years. So we just basically r- really excited to kick off 2021 now. Mm. So going back a little bit, how old were you when you, when you reached out to those uh, hedge funds? And also, how did you actually go about reaching these people and meeting these people? I was about 19 years old. And honestly, it was just friends of a friend that uh, were working in, in New York and mm. uh, that was working uh, in the, um, I'm sure you know, uh, Bloomberg, you know. Mm. So uh, that guy was um, uh, a manager at the Bloomberg office. So I went there, I met, uh, I met the guy. Um, and then, you know, you know, if you know what Bloomberg does, basically they, they provide um, Bloomberg terminal to hedge funds and trading floor and banks. So, you know, I've explained a little bit my story to that guy. Uh, we, we became friends after that. And he basically introduced me to people in, in funds and hedge funds, just traders in general or, or managing trader. And, uh, you know, I've stayed, stayed there for a month. And uh, that, that's, that's basically how it happened. Mm. So what, when you first saw that hedge fund, like when you walked into that door for the first time, what were your like, initial thoughts about it? Well, you know, obviously at that time I was, um, you know, I was 19. Uh, the uh, only uh, thing that I saw, you know, um, back when I was um, younger was, you know, the movies, uh, Wall Street <laughs> movies, et cetera. So when I, when I first walked into that door, uh, in my head, it was kind of the same thing as movies. You know, it, it was the first thing that got me interested into the financial market was the movies, the big trading floor, the uh, the hedge fund stuff. So uh, I was, uh, you know, I remember I was pretty excited about learning, mm-hmm. you know, how, how they were running those businesses. Yeah. Um, and also you mentioned like real estate and that kind of thing. Um, did you, how, how long was it before you started reaching out into um, other income sources? Um, I always had, uh, I think I, I became an entrepreneur, you know, you know, when I was 17, 18. So I was, I was pretty, pretty young. Um, I've always like tried to touch many income sources. So as an example, at that time, I had my uh, payment processing company uh, where I had, you know, sales rep um, and I was sitting myself uh, as well, you know, uh, those services. Um, that's, the, the exact same time when I started to to learn how to trade, and I bought uh, my first property when I was uh, twenty, um, mm. as an income property. Okay, that's that's really good. Um, so, do you have like any tips for um, kind of any age almost that maybe they don't have other income sources? Do you have any tips for how they can build those? Um, you know, uh, at first. Obviously, um, I think that, you know, in the, in the time that we're living right now, um, we're pretty um, lucky because anything that you, can, that you want to learn or that you m- might want to get interested in, uh, you can. So, uh, you know, probably don't, don't get too, too much, you know, stopped. Uh, by the uh, the common thinking that you need to go to school, you need to you know learn one skill at school, just spend you know four or five years at school, and then uh, you know get out of school, be broke for the next five years again. So uh, you know anything that you that that you can learn, there is no limit. You can just go on the internet um, or try to meet people on the internet. You know get great mentors that already did it in the past um you know so anything is possible now we have internet we can network with great people great mind and you Mm -hmm. can basically learn anything so just don't have any limits yeah um so yeah you mentioned like reaching out to mentors because i struggled that for not you know a long time but i did struggle with it a little bit you know you'd reach out to someone that you um, admired or wanted to learn from and they just didn't have time or they didn't you know see the benefit in for them do you have any advice for people that maybe don't have connections to be able to make those connections well 
Um, that's a great, that's a great one. You know, I think that, um, I think that, you know, people that are really successful and, you know, they're always at one point, they're going to want to give back. Mm -hmm. So when I was 18, I don't know if I, I'm not sure I got lucky, you know, I, I was only just trying to, uh, you know, what I was, what I used to do at that time is just, um, Ask somebody on Facebook that I thought was successful <laughs> in, in, in a certain field and just invite him to dinner. So I was just inviting inviting him to dinner and just mm. I, I was just trying to learn from from those people that appear successful. Obviously, some people appear and then they weren't really successful. You know, it was just the 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 image of the social network. But some of them were, uh, and that's when I kind of find my first uh, mentor. Uh, was a guy that were um, really involved in, in the real estate market. That's where I uh, basically started to learn uh, in real estate as well. Um, so probably I'd say you know don't be uh, don't be shy to, to just to just uh, go you know uh, go meet you know successful people and usually the the real ones that are going to be successful they're going to want to give back uh, at some point. So. So you might be the lucky one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think you you have to message. You have to put yourself out there. You have to just kind of um, take the nose almost. Um, and so, you know, hopefully you'll get a yes sometime. Um, so kind of bringing it back to trading a little bit. Can you briefly describe your strategy if you're currently trading? Um, yeah. Well, briefly, you know, what I what I um, I've learned when I when I went to New York and what I'm still doing, you know, uh, as of now is really analyze um, fundamentally a country, a country's economy, you know, inflation, interest rate, um, what the central bank is doing, what its forecast is, um, and I'm building a fundamental analysis over that. And my thinking is always that, you know, when you invest in currencies, it's the same as when you invest in stocks. So basically, you take care of, of an economy. So even though you know you you probably don't have billions of dollars like banks does, if you have the same uh, thinking, so you buy currencies, and as, as an example, you buy uh, USD CAD, uh, you you know you invest in a share of the U.S. economy. So you need to know where the U.S. economy is going. Um, so that. You know, th that's my first thinking. I build my fundamental analysis and then I go to the charts. And usually when I go to the charts, I already, um, you know, know the, the, the fundamental direction. So where the economy shall go. And um, and then just I, I find the type of confluence that I that I like uh, in the technical analysis. So uh, type of confluence that got me, you know, usually 80, 90 percent of the time when I see that kind of confluence. Doesn't it happen often, you know. I'm more like a swing trader, so uh, I'd probably have those opportunities uh, once, twice a week. Um, and then I, uh, when I find that that confluence, I get to get into the the market, um, and I always take those confluence with, you know, goes into my fundamental direction. So uh, that's that's the hedge um, I'm using most. Yeah, and do do you think that? Um most retail traders should be using fundamental analysis i do yeah i do um j just because of the fact that when you're using technical analysis again it's like it's like saying um, you know if you're in the currency space it's like saying you know because of my trend line uh, the u.s economy is going to appreciate against the canadian economy but it, it, you know it doesn't yeah. make any sense <laughs> yeah you know Maybe if you if you trade, you know, if you're a scalper, you're trading, you know, in lower time frame, maybe it can make uh, a little bit more sense. But you know, as soon as you go to the daily time frame, H4 time frame, uh, the most of the movement that you're going to see are going to be based on fundamental. So it's like if you're looking at only looking at technical analysis, it's like only 30 percent, 40 percent of of what you should know uh, in the market. The rest is fundamental. Yeah. So how how can someone learn fundamental analysis? Well, there's you know uh, fundamental analysis is is kind of um, it's 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 macroeconomy. 
Okay, so so you need to know what drives um, what drives the the economy basically. So you need to uh, look at interest rate, inflation rate, um, the bank, the central bank. You know, you can read it's it's all public, so you can read um, a public report of the central bank uh, where they state where they you know they basically state where they think that the economy will go and where they are right now in, in the economy and where it will go in, in, in the future. So uh, that can give you a great uh, idea of, um, of where the economy is going and just looking at interest rate inflation and um, you know international relationship as well. We can look at the exportation, the in importation, um, where, um, where those are going as an example. You know, uh, if you're living in Canada or you're just trading the, the Canadian economy, um, obviously, it will be affected a lot by the oil price because 15% uh, of our GDP in Canada is uh, is from um, U.S. oil that we are uh, producing and selling. But one of the things that is interesting in Canada is that the oil that we are producing is not uh, well. It's 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 way different than any other other uh, oil uh, because it's uh, sand oil. So we have a process that we need to do, which is uh, which costs more than any other country uh, to to uh, refine this oil, and it costs us a lot more. So basically, our profit margin is a lot less. So because of that fact, um, the Canadian economy is affected a lot by the oil price. So you, if you look at the oil price, um, you can you can uh, basically predict. Uh, a little bit where the Canadian economy will go. Obviously, it's not only that, but it's a big factor. So that's one of the examples. So all of these um, kind of little um, knowledge pieces, I guess you could say, um, you know, understanding that oil and um, how it's produced can affect CAD. How long did it take you to kind of understand these tiny little details of each currency maybe? Well, um, you know, if, if we take uh, from that I came back from New York, you know, when I, I kind of first um, got into the game and become a little bit more profitable, it took me about four to five years. Um, but obviously, I did not have any mentor at the time. So it was really, um, it was kind of hard because it was, you know, um, making mistake, you know, looking at some sources of information on the internet. Uh, you know, that source of information was wrong. So uh, I needed to find another website, another source of, of information, another source of, uh, of data. Uh, so it was, you know, making, you know, making try and mistakes. So uh, it took me about four to five years. Okay. And do you think that people should, because um, obviously, you know, Forex trading, everyone wants to make money in a week. Do you think that, um, people should develop a longer term mindset when coming into trading. Obviously, obviously, I think you should have a long term mindset. You know, in every aspect of your life. You know, if you uh, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're building a real estate portfolio, you know, if you invest in real estate as an example, it it does not. Uh, you know, you're not making money um, the next day. You know, you, you need to um, to uh, to refund the amount that you have you've invested. And, and you know might take a, a year or two and then you're selling or refinancing the property three years after so now you're taking the money but uh, it takes it takes some time obviously yeah. so uh, mm -hmm. having a long-term mindset is an asset uh, is an edge yeah so let's say someone has that long-term mindset they've been trading for however many years how can traders have longevity uh, mentally and physically trading how they can have longevity, um, you know. I think that that's one of the things that I that I tell you know everyone that I've mentored. You know, before we start the mentoring, um, you know, I've, I'm I've just ask I just ask ask them, you know, if they really l love trading, you know, for the right reason. So if you love trading for the right reason, which which means you know because you're passionate about analyzing economies, you're passionate about you know. Uh, looking at what is going on in the world, economically speaking, um, if you have a loss, you know, or you have a bad month, 
you're just still going to get on the charts the next month because you just love it. <laughs> you know, so now you're trading for the right reason. But if you're trading for the wrong reason, as an example, you're, uh, you know, just like you said, you know, you, you, you want to get into trading because you want to make um, 10,000 next week. So that's the right, that, that, that's the wrong reason, you know. So uh, if you're trading for the right reason, just because you love it, uh, it doesn't get a, it, 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 it wouldn't matter, you know, if you have a bad month or, or, or a bad week. Yeah. So what would you say motivates you to become a better trader or a better investor coach? Um, actually, just just like I, I've just told you, you know, is the passion that I have yeah. uh, about investing in general. So I, I'm just I consider myself an investor, just an investor in general. I like to to find value in places and um, and invest in it and just uh, multiply the value from it. So I don't, I don't even consider myself as a, as a trader. So I like to invest in, in, in many things where I find uh, value. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting actually. Because um, then it's taken it almost from a um, short-term mindset of trading to a long-term mindset of investing. Um, so what are some misconceptions that maybe new traders have about successful traders? Well, you know, just like anything else, you know, probably they, they think that it just happened overnight, that success just happened overnight, that, you know, you, you become profitable and you're making a lot of money overnight. Uh, so, you know, it's not only trading, it's just like in anything in life, it, it doesn't happen like that. Uh, so if you build this, you know, this long-term thinking and, you know, the, um, the uh, skills of having long-term goals, you know, planning, you know, four or five years in advance, what are you going to do in two years and four years, you know, after you, you, you hit your two years goal, what is going to be next, you know? So if you have, if you manage to plan, uh, you know, in, in, uh, over a long term, that's a skill. Um, so I think that people that does that are, you know, way more likely to be successful, um, uh, leave their, their life uh, to chance. You know they're, they're basically planning their life uh so so yeah that's one of the misconceptions is that success happened overnight that you're making money overnight and that trading is a is a get rich quick you know uh, <laughs> uh thing and, and it's uh, obviously not <laughs> yeah yeah um would you have any like advice or tips for people to actually plan out their life because obviously there's so much kind of um things to think about almost you know you've got your bills you've got all the rest of it do you have any tips for people that maybe are struggling yeah well you know i'd say first of all you need to find what you love so i can understand that you know some people are struggling because they don't really know um, what they love to do basically so first of all i said the first thing is to is to go you know you know work into finding what makes you happy in life work into finding um, what you love to do, you know, what gets you uh, waking up in the morning very early, just because you're exciting to go to you to to your job or to your business, you know. Mm -hmm. So once you find what you really really love to do, then it's, it's just you know um, having the mindset that anything that you can imagine in your mind, you can actually build it, you know. So if you have that mindset. Um, just have fun, you know, see life as a, as, a, um, as a playground that you can just build anything. Yeah. So, so from the, the first uh, thing that you find that you love to do, you just build from that and you just imagine anything and anything that you can imagine, you can build it. So now you just start to building a long-term plan, what I'm going to do in the next month, two months, six months, two years. And, uh, and, and from that, from that anything is possible yeah i like that actually there was i can't remember exactly what it was but um there was a there was a quote that i saw where it was um talking about imagination all that kind of stuff and it was all imagination is is you seeing an alternative reality where that thing is true which i quite like yeah because that means that it's possible um so spinning off from that a little bit 
um, a goal of mine is to have a trading floor and obviously you have a trading floor so it would be kind of good for me and I think good for the viewers if we can talk about that a little bit so what made you set up the trading floor uh, like how many traders do you have um, do they all trade the same strategy yeah so we have about 20 traders um, mm. it's all people that I've mentored personally so I, I kind of uh, um, you know at, at first I did uh, to, for us to have a place to work together um, they don't all trade the same strategy but it's all based of the knowledge that I've that I give them basically. So we all, we all look at fundamental analysis in the same way. We usually look at technical analysis in the same way. Uh, but then, you know, uh, the pairs that I'm trading most because I, I kind of mastered those pair over the years are, you know, USD CAD, Euro, U, uh, USD, Euro, JPY, and gold. Um, so those are the four pairs that I, I know I master and that I, um, you know, I focus on. And so I cannot look at all the other markets uh, because it, it'll be too much. So all the other traders are basically building their own strategies based on my knowledge uh, and what I've taught them, um, but in other kind of markets. So now we are 20 traders. And so now we can uh, look at mostly a, a, any currency market and even commodities market. So we, uh, you know, we're just a bigger team uh, finding more value together. Hmm. I think that's really cool. Um, so do you have any advice for traders that are looking to trade for a firm? For a, a fund, you mean? Yeah, like a, a prop firm, or maybe they want to trade for a hedge fund, or um, I don't know, trade with you on your trading trading floor. Yeah, so first thing, you know, obviously, uh, I think many trading floors or, or firm have a different, you know, um, different requirement, but uh, as an example, me is just you know we want to be a private fund, a private trading floor, just people that I, that that go through our program and and uh, and afterward they can uh, work with us on the trading floor. But you know some firm uh, will require um, probably um, a track record, you know solid track record, of one year, two year, three years, uh, depending. So. I think the you know the first thing is to just focus on building your track record, uh, your books. You know that's one of the things that I usually advise people. You know instead of um, you know start with a thousand dollars account and trying to make a living from investing a thousand dollar account, uh, just don't look at the money. You know for the first year, um, look at the percentage, look at the returns out of your investment, focus on you know, building a track record that you can, um, you can prove that you're making, let's say 10% a month, 15% a month. It doesn't have to be like 80% a month. It just the, the important part is to be consistent. So just focus on, on building a book of uh, six months, a year, a year and a half that you're consistently profitable with a certain uh, return monthly. And um, you know, it doesn't matter if you have only a thousand dollars account or a five hundred dollar account. The importance is is the track record. So after that, when you have that, you can basically go to a firm, go to a trading floor, and uh, there will be people that uh, will be interested in your strategy because you're consistent. And just focus on consistency for the first year, for the first two years, and after that, you you, you can go to a to a firm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really good. Um... And it also kind of links back to the long-term mindset as well um, of putting in that time to get that track record. Exactly. Um, what advice would you give to anyone that struggles with uh, discipline or maybe patience to actually, you know, trade a live account for a year? Um, is there any advice that you would give those people? Well, obviously, if you're, you know, obviously you need to have at first, you know, another source of income. So, you know, starting to trade and first month, you know, um, base, you know, expecting that you can pay your rent or your bills with your first month profit is not something that is uh, viable, you know, so uh, make sure you have at least, you know, you, you keep your job or you keep your other business. Uh, you, you just make sure you have a source of income that, um, that cover all your needs, all your, your basic needs. And, uh, 
and so all you're trading, you, you're not stressed about trading. You know, the, the worst thing you can do is is stressing about uh, about a trade because at the end of the day, you know, you can manage your strategy, you can control your strategy, but you 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 can never control the market. So don't base you know your uh, your basic need on what the market is going to give you. You know, so uh, that can help to have a um, a longer term mindset. So if all your needs are covered, you're not stressed about trading. It doesn't matter if, you know, during a month you don't see any trade and you just don't take any trade because it doesn't fit your strategy. Uh, it doesn't matter. So you can have a longer term mindset. Yeah. And the last question I have is what's some uncon unconventional advice that you would give to a trader that wants to succeed? Um, I'd say obviously, you know, make sure that you have a trading plan. Uh, make sure that you you build um, either with a mentor, either by yourself with your own experience, but that you build a trading plan that um, you always get back to every time you do a trade. So so you have um, you know you don't act in the market emotionally, but you just act in the market in a logical way. So as an example, my trading plan, I see it as, um, as an algorithm that I need to execute in the market, just like a computer does. So without any emotion, just pure logic. And so work on building your own trading plan. And uh, that is going to allow you to, to only act in the market uh, in, you know, in a logical way. Uh, that's that's I, I think that's the one of the most important thing in trading most of the people you know they, they get into trading and they just uh, they trade in the market when they feel you know the market is going to go up or go down but it's it's a feeling it's an emotion so so you need to uh, to do the opposite you need to have a trading plan that guide you through uh, the market and in within the trading plan you know you have a you have a many edges that hire your probability so that's that's the, the the main goal. Yeah, I, I agree with that one hundred percent. Is there anything else that you would like to say? And also, where can people find you? Um, sure. So, uh, well, my website it's pretty simple, Wilson dot com, and obviously I'm on Instagram. You know, uh, Tristan and Wilson as well is the same thing. Um, so yeah, and I also have a YouTube channel where uh, I actually. I'm going to start a podcast as well. So when you invited me to your podcast, I was pretty happy. So I'm starting a <laughs> podcast as well uh, on uh, in January. So you can go on YouTube. Same thing, Tristan uh, Wilson. Amazing. Thank you for coming on. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Jacob.